Hello, my name is Richard Rothman, a historian who is interested in uh, New Deal era murals. A lot of people call these WPA murals, um, but I use the term New Deal era murals because some of these murals were painted outside of the WPA program. And uh, I'll be showing uh, murals of in, in San Francisco and one place beyond. Uh, oh, what happened? Oh, um, San Francisco was very fortunate uh, when President Roosevelt set up the first uh, program to put artists to work. San Francisco was all ready uh, to start for two reasons. One is uh, Diego Rivera uh, was instrumental and came to the city in, in the 1930s. And the other was the Art Institute um, taught a class in frescoes. Frescoes means fresh paint where plaster is, uh, wet plaster is applied to the wall and then the pigments are painted over it. One of the first projects where there were blank walls was Coit Tower. And one has to remember Coit Tower, Beach Chalet, and the Mother's Building were not designed for murals. Uh, Coit Tower just finished in 1933, and there were these blank walls there. Um, so they had a competition. Uh, 50 artists applied, and 26 were selected. Um, this is one of the murals by uh, Bernard Zakheim, who studied with Diego Rivera in Mexico City and San Francisco. Um, this is one by Victor Arnatov. Uh, you can see here Montgomery in Washington. That's where a lot of the uh, artists uh, hung out. They had a artist colony there. Uh, that's now where the Transamerica building is. And, um, this is by Olmsted here, Industry. Uh, he was the one who brought uh, Diego Rivera to San Francisco. Um, these murals at Coit Tower are open to the public uh, daily. But if you want to see the murals on the second floor, I'd recommend going on a city guide tour every Wednesday and Saturday morning, which you need to make a reservation. Um, this was one of the controversial murals in our photos in the paper. The examiner um, took Bernard Zakheim's photos, and on the top, they put the Soviet symbol in the tower. Uh, this was a photograph, our mural above the window uh, in uh, Coit Tower. And when the tower was closed for six months in the 1930s, uh, the city uh, removed this and other murals. If they were just painted over, we could recover them, but they were um, sandblasted away. And the murals stayed closed about for six months. And one of the reasons was this photograph here. Uh, the next set of photographs I'm going to show is at the uh, Alemany Health Center, also painted by Bernard Zakheim. Uh, this was funded by the state of California. Um, this building was a uh, San Francisco public health building. Uh, I went in the building when I worked for the city and never knew there were murals in the building. Uh, the mural downstairs was painted over, probably because the public health officials didn't want to see uh, uh, showing uh, a mother breastfeeding. But I've never found any photographs of it. Um, the mural upstairs is community focus. These were painted by uh, Bernard Zakheim. And hopefully uh, Artspan is going to be moving into the building and uh, the public will enjoy, um, will enjoy seeing these murals, which by the way, most people in the community didn't even know that these murals existed. So thanks to John Avalos for uh, saving these murals. 
Uh, the next set of murals are also by Bernard Zackheim. Um, this mural and the next one were in another room and uh, the building was uh, removed, but these murals were small enough where uh, the back of the mural was chipped away. And so these murals could be saved. They were on fresco. Um, the doctors at uh, UCSF were very impressed with uh, Bernard Zackheim's work. And uh, besides painting these two murals, he painted the murals in Tolan Hall, the history of medicine. Uh, half of them show Southern California and the other half show Northern, Northern California. And uh, UC wanted to remove this building. And first they told the Zakheim family, well, you come and remove the murals. And they didn't have the wherewithal to remove them. Uh, fortunately, these murals were painted on steel plates. And so a bunch of us community activists uh, persuaded UCSF to save the murals. So these murals were uh, removed. Uh, ARG came in and and actually lifted the murals out of the building. Uh, they're in storage somewhere in the East Bay, and we're trying to get UC to find a new location for these murals, hopefully in some new building, or hopefully they'll stay in San Francisco. Uh, this mural here is by Olmsted. This is at um, City College in San Francisco. Um, this mural and the next mural were painted at the Art Institute. Uh, as I said before, the Art Institute had a class in frescoes and it was just discovered a couple of years ago uh, that there were murals on the wall here. And um, the Art Institute started uncovering um, the murals on the walls here. This is one and this is another one here. Uh, so besides saving the Diego Rivera mural in the Arts, Art Institute building, there's also these murals on the wall. I don't think they've all been uncovered, but quite a few have been uncovered. I haven't, well, the building's closed, so I haven't been in there recently to see what murals have been uncovered. But uh, this is another reason why this building needs to be saved. Um, they, these next set of murals are uh, from the San Francisco Maritime Museum uh, at Aquatic Park, part of the old bathhouse. Um, these murals were um, part of a modern building uh, built by the WPA workers. Um, this mural here was uh, painted by Heil Hiller. Uh, he was a jazz uh, uh, owner in uh, a jazz club owner in Paris. He always wanted to be an artist, but it wasn't until he moved back to San Francisco that he was given this commission of it, putting all the um, of all the artwork in this building. This is his work on on the uh, second floor of uh, Life Under the Sea. Uh, these are some of the close-ups here of the mural, and they're in really great condition. Uh, uh, they were just touched up to about ten years ago, but the National Park Service has taken. Uh, great care of these um, murals here and, and of the building here. Uh, this is the third floor. These are murals were painted by Richard Ayers. And uh, until about five years ago, these murals were covered up with plywood and uh, Anne Rosenthal uncovered these murals. And they're really absolutely, uh, really beautiful. Right now, the, this floor is closed to the public. Uh, there was tours up here before the, uh, the pandemic. And so they're sl 
slowly starting to uh, open up the building. Here's another close up of some of the of the the murals here, but the, these are really a, a hidden gem in, in San Francisco, and we should thank the National Park Service and the for taking great care of these murals here. Um, the next couple of murals are of John Muir, where I went to elementary school, and. Uh, Here's the third one here. And these murals are in pretty good condition here. And this is a photo mural that not many people know about. This was by Benjamin Cunningham. And this mural is in City Hall. One of the, I think there was another one, but this is the only one that I know and is still around. This is a photo mural. This mural is in the, um, treasurer's office in on the first floor in city hall and uh, he let us come in his office to to see these beautiful uh in gems in in san francisco that not many people know about uh, the next two murals are uh of murals at laguna honda hospital and the old building there and the art commission about maybe 10 years ago restore these murals. And then this mural and the next mural are at uh, Roosevelt Middle School out on Arguello. And then this mural here is at uh, Mission High School, one of two murals and uh, you can see how uh, Edith Hamill portrayed the uh, uh, Padres and the uh, Native Americans. Um, there's two murals in the building. This build, this mural, you can see the full uh, depth of the mural. These two murals were in the library, and they can this room they can converted into a counseling office. And then where the other mural is, they made counseling offices so one cannot see the full view of the mural there. And this is, these are the set of murals from George Washington High School. This is the life of Washington. This was uh, painted by Victor Arnatoff. Uh, he spent a year studying George Washington and preparing for this uh, mural. Um, the building was designed by Timothy Fluger, who was a fan of Diego Rivera. In fact, all the artists who painted the murals in Washington also painted the uh, murals in Coit Tower. Uh, this is Washington exploring the new country here, going out into the wilderness here. And this is the Revolutionary War of the War of Independence here. And then this mural um, upstairs is uh, uh, showing uh, Washington. He was he did own slaves. This is one of them here. And then this is the second one here of Washington uh, pointing to the slaves. Um, in the late 1960s, early 70s, um, some of the black students at Washington objected to this mural and wanted it to be uh, removed. There was a great controversy involving this Board of Education and the mayor at that time. So instead of having the movie, the mural removed, they asked this young artist at the time, Dewey Crumpler, 
to paint a uh, three response murals. And this is one of them here. Uh, they're really powerful. They're they're in the room right next to the uh, to where the Victor Arnotov murals are. This is one of them here. These are not frescoes. These were painted oil on canvas. And up to the time, Dewey Crumpler was still uh, teaching at the Art Institute before it uh, closed. And then this is the one that's been in the paper recently of uh, Washington pointing uh, to the settlers go west. And uh, uh, you can't see here, but he's he's showing the uh, the settlers that they should move west in um, the controversies over uh, the the Indian line on the ground there. And, um, but I think he wanted just to show, you know, how Washington wanted to expand the country. Um, some of us want to just, you know, cover up the mules, murals or off, offer alternative uh, scenarios to the murals. And one of them, I'm gonna, uh, oh, before I show that, uh, this is Arnotov's mural in uh, in uh, the Presidio in the Interfaith Church there. That uh, if you go on the side of the building, you can see this uh, mural here. But this was uh, I show this mural. This was painted in the old post office building, showing the expansion of the West, and it was quite controversial. And when the Department of Interior took it over. Um, some of their employees and objected to this uh, mural, which is quite controversial. And the Park Service decided to cover up the mural here with this curtain so that when people want to see it, they could uncover the murals. And this could be uh, one solution for the murals at, uh, at George Washington. Uh, this is uh, the next set of murals at the library. Uh, modern science. This is at the entrance to the library. And this is the mural on the east wall here, uh, showing the printing press. And this is the mural on the west hall, west wall showing uh, education here. And you can see how we use the radio, the speaker here to to put in the radio tower here. Uh, most of these murals are in pretty good condition. There was a fire in, but um, uh, but otherwise these, you know, they need, they do need cleaning and, and, and taken care of. Uh, the, 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 the school district murals are under the jurisdiction of the, of the unified school district. And in this year, uh, this uh, for a relief here is by Sergeant uh, Johnson here, and uh, this this is the Basel relief. This was done later in the nineteen forties. Uh, this is out in the football field here. And the next set of murals are going to be about the Mother's Building which most people haven't been in. It's been closed for the last uh, 22 years. Um, this building was built in 1925. Um, it was built by the, for the Flyshackers uh, brothers to honor their mother. And when the old Sloat entrance was the main entrance, uh, this building was used uh, where mothers, in fact, in the beginning, only mothers could go in the building with their children, where the mothers could take their uh, children and rest from the outside weather and, and just have a place to relax. Uh, later, eventually, it was open up to all. But here is a waiting pool in front of the building here. Uh, then when uh, in the 1930s, when the New Deal program, art programs, um, uh, three sisters of 
for Tom Sisters came out here and painted two mosaics on the outside of the building. This is one of them. Uh, they later, later went on to paint some uh, artwork in some of the hotels in San Francisco, work with Diego Rivera. Uh, there's a book, uh, Sisters in the Art by Wendy Good, which uh, really gives a history. And I learned a lot uh, from reading the book about these uh, three sisters. And then when, uh, and here's a picture of the three sisters here. They, they were painted by Lucien LeBeau up in, uh, in Coit Tower here. And then we're inside the mother's building here. Um, these murals were painted by Dorothy Puccinelli and, um, and Helen Forbes. Um, they did some artwork or sketches out here uh, before they applied to do the work at the at Coit Tower, but decided instead of waiting that they would come out to the zoo, they first were only going to do a little portion, but they decided to paint on all four walls. Uh, the larger walls are about 100 feet long. Uh, these uh, are on uh, egg tempera, which means the plaster could dry before they added uh, the egg yolk. Uh, and they took time. They ran out of money the first time, and then they made too much money. And in the meantime, they did some other work. If you go to Merced, California, in the po on the post office walls, there's two murals by each of them there. And here's uh, uh, some of th these uh, depict uh, uh, Noel, Noah in the Ark. And the building's been closed for about uh, since 2000. And hopefully someday we'll get to open the building up again and people can enjoy these beautiful uh, artwork here. And this is what happens when uh, the building's not taken care of. As I mentioned before, the building wasn't designed for uh, the murals and uh, water seeped into the, to the west wall and uh, this is what happened. Unfortunately, I found a uh, movie of how these murals looked before the water damage. So they can be um, they can be restored if the city wants to do that. Uh, this is some more here. These are some of my uh, favorite. Um, Dorothy Puccinelli uh, did an interview, an oral interview in the 1960s, and I'd just like to paraphrase what she said. Uh, she said that these murals were important uh, for two reasons. One is it gave the artist a chance to practice their crafts and also uh, did not discriminate, gave women a chance to do, um, uh, to do their craft, although, the rules were set up that only one household uh, could receive federal funds. And the other reason was that this was one of the first times that uh, artwork was done on public buildings. So people could see these building, this artwork without having to pay to go into, into the museums and see the artwork. And so uh, people could go into Coit Tower and Beach Chalet and into the high schools and see these murals and hopefully someday into the mother's building. I think, um, you know, this was a chance to bring artwork to the public here. And the murals have been really protected. They're high up off the ground. so. You know, they they didn't get any handprints or food on the on the walls. And this is a, a set of murals down by Rinkin Annex near the post off near the, the the ferry building by Anton Refrigerator, and he these were controversial. He started these before 
World War II and didn't finish till the 1940s. And a young congressman, Richard Nixon, tried to get these murals removed. I believe the building is privately owned or long-term lease from the post office, and they were just cleaned up a couple of years ago. And these are on public display on Spear, Spearson Mission. You can go down and see these beautiful murals. And the last set of murals I'm going to show are not in California. They're in McKinleyville, California, up north. And I'm showing these because these were the hardest murals that I had to go to to get in to see these murals. They were originally in the post office in Eureka, California, and the building was uh, uh, removed. And but the the judges in the court saved these murals, and um, these murals are by time. Uh, Thomas Laham, and their five egg temper murals, and they're now they're moved to a courthouse in McKinleyville, and it is very hard to get in to see these murals. Uh, they don't use the courthouse much, but uh, all I know is I had a very hard time uh, getting in to see them, so I just wanted. Uh, people to uh, to appreciate these uh, murals that are not seen by uh, by very many people. And the uh, judge was nice enough to let me come in to take the photographs of these murals. So I want to thank you uh, for uh, seeing this show. And if you want more information, I have a webpage, richardrothman.net. And thanks again.